Resonant Evil, Origins, Chapter 1. Andrew Robinson couldn't sleep a wink for worry, and for good reason. As it stood, he had bills to pay, plus a wife and two children to help provide for, and that was where I add into the equation that the mortgage was not far off from being well and truly overdue. His wife, Ellen, and his son and daughter, Christopher and Lisa, had tried their best as much as he had many times over to chip in with the bills. No matter how hard the family pulled together in hopes of assuring their own survival, the bills just ended up going from reasonable and affordable to borderline unreasonable. Andrew sighed and had a few more sips of tea at the kitchen table he was sitting at before turning his attention back to seven newspapers full of wanted ads in the job description department. He'd had a good job beforehand until they'd caught a fellow member of staff at his previous employment at the Apple M in downtown Raccoon City nicking money from the cash till. Andrew confronted the fiend in the act and gone right to the top, but despite his honesty, the manager and his boss at the time had taken the scumbag's word over his own. And just for the sake of being the better man, being a whistleblower, and doing the right thing, it had cost him his job for absolutely no rhyme or reason at all, as far as Andrew was concerned. An irritated scowl crossed his face, his blue eyes burning with annoyance and resentment, not at his wife and kids, but at the sleazy boss of his, and to the pond scum who had cost him his honourable occupation in the first place. Fuck my life, he muttered angrily. He knew as much as anyone that money didn't grow on trees any more than food and drink wouldn't provide itself. He's had her quite badly from the stress, but he called on his justified and righteous indignation and frustration to take his mind off of the migraine that was beginning to burn into existence behind his temple and behind his tired eyes. Andrew hadn't slept for two days and two nights from the panic at not having a job, as well as the honest-to-goodness fear in losing their home. Ignoring the merciless paradigm for his skull, his jaw set in a determined line. Look also met his eyes, making both the irises of his optic nerves burn with a fierce fire. Andrew didn't care what job he did, as long as it was an honest line of work, and as long as the job paid very well. Because if things don't improve soon. He couldn't bring himself to encourage that last train of thought any further for the good of his family. Besides, he understood enough that within reason, no matter how bad things get, you only failed in life if you didn't try. And that was not in any way what was on the table if their husband and father had anything to do with it. Sighing again, he rose from the table, went and made himself a fresh cup of tea, then reseated himself back at the kitchen table, ready and willing to plough through the wanted ads yet again for the upteenth time. Whatever it took, Andrew Robinson made himself a silent vow that he would find himself some employment, even if it killed him. With steel in his eyes, he returned his full attention back to the Wrecking City Times newspapers, spread out across the kitchen table, and started to reread the wanted ads.